A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. I wouldn't have driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. 
But instead of a family, they were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library.